welcome everybody. It's a, a very real and genuine pleasure today to welcome one of our favourite speakers, the Head of Place and Property from Lynn Lease, Seamus McCartney. Lovely to see you and I hope the COVID is, is not treating you too badly. Oh, thank you. Um, look, and, and you know, like COVID's got upsides and downsides and being, a, I guess, an urbanist and a place person watching my local street, and I live in Balmain, you know, come alive with people during the middle of the day, which was a problem pre-COVID, is a, a positive, um, but watching, you know, our wonderful developments in the city centres and other areas be quite quiet, and the impacts of that is, of course, a, a terrible thing for both um, the people that run those businesses, the people that frequent them, and also, you know, the city in general. So we've got a Herculean task ahead of us, all of us, to, to reinvigorate the city, but I'm very positive about where we're going to go. Well, I think it's an amazing opportunity, but let's just talk mm. about what's happening in CBDs at the moment, because there's a fair amount of conversation at the moment, you know, city CBDs all over the world are dying and struggling to get themselves back to where they were before. I suppose the question is, who are you seeing who's doing a particularly good job at that? And are we all whistling Dixie a bit because those CBDs are never going to be quite the same again? Oh, look, I, I'm going to start off with my favourite line in COVID, and that is, I believe, in cities, and cities are resilient. So if we look at you know, the great cities around the world, they've been through pandemics before, they've been through wars, they've been through depressions and they come out at the back end and, and people get on with life. And the wonderful thing about cities and, and regional centres as well is people like to be together. So that human nature drives people being there. Look, as a, as a macro thematic, I think we were seeing some green shoots in all our CBDs in terms of moving to the things that uh, embed long-term sustainability in cities pre-COVID. And actually, COVID's accelerating those. It's brought you know, some big questions around um, how people move into cities, how they act in cities. And you look at uh, London as an example, which has really closed down essentially the whole of Soho to traffic and opened it out to outdoor dining. Um, looks like a no-brainer, really, when you think yeah. about it. Um, but it's taken COVID for that that bold step to, to happen. So, you know, call out Sydney City, uh, City of Sydney, that's just done the same thing here in, in anticipation of every coming, everyone coming back here. And anecdotally from Melbourne, uh, my friends that, that live down there have been out, someone was there in Long Grain uh, over the weekend and the outdoor dining was vibrant and buzzy. You know, it's sort of, and that wonderment of the CBD and, and having that experiential quality that we have in our great cities is, is coming back already. So big believer, it's all there. And actually place is going to drive um, workplace. You know, so it's, it's now becoming far more related to the core business of people uh, having economic prosperity in the city, but also down on the ground plane enlivening it. And it's an it's a, it's a interesting moment, I think, for all, all urbanists and people that work in this space. Are we going to see a different core of cities? And by that, I suppose I mean um, things like retail, I mean, I had the opportunity quite recently to speak to Paul Zara, who's the head of the retailers. And, you know, they're forecasting that it may take four to five years for, say, the CBD of Sydney to recover from a retail point of view. Mm. And potentially Melbourne may take much longer, up to nearly a decade. So are we going to see cities change in terms of why you go to them? I think that's a fundamental of cities. They're always changing. And I'm going to answer your question obliquely. Uh, I was in <laughs> London uh, building our Athletes Village uh, before the 2012 Olympics. And that was, of course, through the GFC, which hit the UK and the wider world a lot harder than Australia. Uh, and I witnessed a city that dropped off remarkably uh, and, and the doom and gloom of, of, of London as a place and as a retail destination was, was out there. And look, within a year or two, you know, inventive people had opened little bars and restaurants and shops. Yes, there was a correction in rents, but the life came right into London. And I think it'd be hard to argue that London isn't now one of the more vibrant cities in the world. And we all know 20 years ago, that wasn't the case. So um, yes, it will take time for retailers to recover through this and stimulus and support through both economic stimulus, but the great work we're seeing in the city of Melbourne, where they're activating laneways and outdoor dining and support and, you know, um, hoarding, you know, art in, in, in shops that have been closed and just making it a great place to be all helping, giving people a chance, but also people taking that bit and seeing that sense of opportunity. You know, rents are less than what they were. Therefore, maybe I can give it a go. And to me, that's a, a great potential for all our cities, both, you know, our CBDs, but also our regional cities. If you look up at uh, Newcastle is a great example. The government and the city of Newcastle has invested very strongly in uh, you know, transport up there, moving the heavy rail and putting a tram in, plus universities. Um, 
you know, with COVID, what a great opportunity to lessen the load maybe on some of our CBDs and grow that regional capability, uh, which then drives economies and, you know, it makes us a stronger, a stronger Australia, really. Let me ask you a question that just goes back to your earlier comment about you watching the change in your own local environment and your street. Yep. Do you think that, you know, the whole change in the way we work and, you know, we may go back to the office, but I think there's still going to be an element of a big element of working from home that never was there before. Mm. Do you think this is going to perhaps drive a better outcome for some of those localised mobility strategies about providing better localised transport, making it mm. easier to make those precincts outside of CBDs? Look, that's a, that's a great question. Look, our, we've just repurposed our strategy or, or given our new purpose and vision uh, to together we create value through places where communities thrive. And that's all about local communities. And of course, the CBD is a local community as well. In fact, the best CBDs do have local communities. Yeah. Um, so we, we think that is a thematic that will happen across local uh, streets like Darling Street, but also our communities business and even retirement businesses. We've got a, a large project in Wollongong, which is a wonderful opportunity to create a a localised centre. I believe that people like to be with others. Now, whether that's through recreation, leisure or work, um, that, that is always going to be a driver. So what we may see is our workplaces become more collaborative and that uh, expectation or allowance of quiet work to be done at home. But I, I think, you know, when you really look at most people and what they would like to do, um, they're still going to be drawn to centres. So what we might see come out is our local office, which you may have heard out in Manly, which is a, a local offshoot of Barangaroo that people work out if they don't want to go in there. You might see that sort of approach uh, spread out both in, um, you know, high streets, but also making uh, retail centres urbanisation centres other than just retail. So tell me, what sort of impact do you think this potential change, which I have to say sounds fab, um, mm. how's that going to impact on things like public transport and the way we design public transport? Well, again, I like to use history. I like data, which is quite strange being a, you know, a place person. Uh, but if you look at uh, Spencer Street or you know, Southern Cross Station in Melbourne, it's already been reaching its peak load that was projected. I think it was for 2036 today. So it's already at peak load. We could see some smoothing of that load to regional areas and different times of the day. And actually, a lot of global cities do have a much longer work day and they use that sort of process. And of course, that's what off-peak and, and peak charging on ticketing does. Um, so that, that could help there. And I think there's then a question for our city cause. Um, is the, the, the 10 to 2 crunch that we see at lunchtime in our CBDs smooth? And do we have uh, and a more even tempo throughout the day, which I think could be quite a positive thing for our CBDs, potentially getting more um, income for retailers. So they're not just relying on that, but also, um, look, I, I think we all like a gentle hum. Not all of us like a, a massive crowd. So it could be quite entertaining to, to be in a city that has that, you know, daytime, nighttime activity that's more distributed and that could be a, a really great thing for our cities well i'm conscious of time but i'm going to finish by asking you you know this has been a really challenging year for everybody but mm. I, you know i honestly believe you've got to have some legacy out of every disaster that that give you some hope for the future what's the thing that you you really take out of this that you think is going to make a huge difference to the way we think about place what's the most exciting thing the opportunity for you out of this awful 2020 how many minutes do I have? Um, <laughs> look, I, I'm going to I'm going to go to one. Look, it's Nardoc Week, right? And and yep. it's really important to recognise the First Nations of our community. I'm on Gadigal land here, the Eora Nation, and you know we're growing our business to talk about that. We launched our Elevate Wrap this week, which is um, an achievement for us. We're very proud of that. I think it's our second one, and what it's, it's all about place. It's all about how do we co-create and participatory design with our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander. Um, fellow citizens of Australia and how we work that through into creating the best experiential outcomes for our cities. Our cities are amazing. Like our CBD cores are really great. We've got great beaches near most cities. If we haven't got beaches, we've got wineries. We've got destinational tourism that spring off our cores. Um, so embedding that Australianness that embraces our past and therefore looks to what the future can be, I think could grow our brand very strongly globally around being a destination where you know, people want to come live, come visit, or, you know, spend some time with us. And that, you know, that to me is very, very exciting. 
Well, that's fabulous. And that's such an inspiring note for us to end on. So Seamus, thank you so much. And we look forward to an exciting future for all of our cities here in Australia. Thank you very much. Look, love the work you guys do. And, you know, as I said before we started recording, <laughs> um, place, you know, and tourism transport are one in the same. So what's very interesting is the good for everyone is good for our economy. And I think that's one of the interesting things of COVID. It's brought on some macro thematics uh, to bear very quickly. And now we get to build upon them. So um, I am a, have a positive bias, but I'm really excited to see where we can take this as an industry. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Seamus. Thanks a lot. Bye.